CSS positions are changing because we now have anchor positioning, position areas, and even position fallbacks. These allow you to create smart drop-down menus using only HTML and CSS. And here's the exciting part. You can set up your menus so that they never go out of screen. I mean, look at this. This menu opens to the bottom right per default. But now, when it is very close to the edge, it will open to the bottom left, because it cannot open to the bottom right. And if it is at the bottom of the screen, it will open up. Previously, we had to use a ton of JavaScript, but this right here works using just modern CSS. And in this video, I will explain all of these new CSS properties so you can build stuff like this on your own. My name is Fabian and you're watching coding to go In HTML, all we need is a button and a div container, which will be our menu. The cool thing is, to make it work, we don't need any JavaScript. Because right here, we can just use the popover attribute. This will turn the container into a popover. Which is also why we need an ID so that we can control it using the button. Because the button needs the popover target attribute. Here, we reference that exact ID, menu. Now these two elements are connected. When I click the button, the menu will open. If I click anywhere on the screen, the menu will close again. We can also use escape or click the button again to close it. So this is already a functioning drop-down menu. Keep in mind that all of this is modern HTML and CSS. It is not fully supported by all browsers. You will have to wait before using it in production, but it does work in Chrome. Now, of course, this menu doesn't look great. So let's add a few basic styles in CSS just to make it look a bit nicer. This part isn't important for understanding, so I will fast forward. Now, the only thing you really need to pay attention to is how the popover API opens and closes the menu. It does that by toggling the display property of the menu. So when the menu is closed, the browser will set display none. And when it opens, the browser will restore the display value automatically. And because of this, we should not manually set the display property on the menu. Because if we do that, we are breaking the open and closing behavior. However, I do need a display grid here to get the menu items to be laid out vertically. Luckily, there is a solution for this. We should only apply a display value when the popover is opened. And for that, we have a pseudo class. Menu popover open. This means only apply display grid when the menu is open. Now to the tricky part. How can we control the position of this menu? So right now, our menu simply pops into the normal document flow. I want it to appear relative to the button. It should be placed below and grow to the right side. For this, we need another modern CSS concept called anchor positioning. Anchor positioning is a new CSS layout feature that allows one element to anchor itself to another element. Think of it like saying, this menu should be positioned relative to that specific button. And to achieve that, we simply follow two steps. Step one, give the button an anchor name. For example, dash dash menu button. We do that similar to how we define custom properties using two dashes. Step two, tell the menu which anchor it should follow. So the menu needs position absolute and position anchor menu button. Now these two elements are connected. So this tells the menu your reference point is the menu button. But now we need to tell it where to appear relative to the anchor. And for this, there are really two approaches you could follow depending on what you want to do. Method one, position area. With position area, we describe the placement using a 3x3 grid. The anchor, or button, sits in the center of this grid. And we can choose top, center, or bottom, combined with left, center, or right. So for example, we could say position area, bottom, center. This will place the menu directly below the anchor, in the center. Bottom right uses the bottom right corner of the anchor. It is very visual and quite intuitive, so I recommend you play around with these combinations to get a feeling for it. However, in my case, I wanted the menu to align with the bottom left corner, but extend to the right side. And using position area, I wasn't able to get that exact behavior. Because when I say bottom left, the menu will use the correct anchor point, which is the bottom left corner, but it will open to the left side. And this is not what I wanted. I want to use the same anchor point, but open to the right side. Maybe you have a clever trick for this. If so, please let me know in the comments. But I do have a solution for this if we use the second method, which is the anchor function. So instead of position area, we can use the properties you already know, top, left, right, and bottom. These are the properties we usually use to position elements. And on these properties, we can use the anchor function. For example, we could say top should be anchor bottom. And this essentially means place the top edge of the menu on the bottom edge of the button. We can also say left, anchor left, which means align the left edge of the menu with the left edge of the button. And this approach will allow me to place the menu exactly where I wanted it. So both approaches are valid. Position area is more visual, while anchor gives you more precise control. But now let's finally talk about what makes all of this extremely powerful. Creating fallbacks. What happens if the button is positioned near the right edge of the screen? If the menu tries to open to the bottom right, it might go out of view. And this is bad UX. Users should not have to scroll sideways just to see a menu. 
so we need a fallback behavior. If opening to the bottom right doesn't fit, then the menu should automatically switch to the bottom left. Previously, we had to use a ton of JavaScript to calculate available space and reposition the element. But now we can do this in CSS using add position try. We give this position a name, dash dash below right, just like a custom property. In the code block, we first unset all the other properties. So top left, right and bottom should all be unset so that they don't affect our position. And luckily we have a shorthand for this called inset. So let's set inset to unset. Now that we have a fresh start, we can define the top and left values again. Since this should be the default value, I will copy top and left from above. Now this is our default position. Let's copy all of this and define a fallback position below left. Here we still have to reset all the other properties and we also use top anchor bottom. This stays the same. But instead of aligning the left edges, we will align the right edges of the menu. Right, anchor, right. Now we have defined two positions we can access. Let's use them on the menu. Here we define position try fallbacks. And first we say below right. And with a comma, we then say below left. So this means first try to use position right. And if it doesn't fit in the viewport, switch to below left. And now let's see how it behaves in the browser. When the button is on the left or in the center of the screen, it can open to the bottom right because there's enough space. But the moment I place the button at the end of the body, it can no longer open to the bottom right. So it will use below left. It can perfectly access the fallback position. And of course you can define more fallbacks. What if the menu was at the bottom of the screen? Then it should open up. Simply define more positions for this. Hopefully you can see how powerful this will be once browser support catches up. Being able to position UI elements intelligently without any JavaScript is a big deal. And if you're interested in how to position elements creatively, like in a bento style layout, then you need to know that there is a layout technique you can use right now with full browser support. It is called CSS grid areas. So if you want to learn how to position your elements like that, click this video right here to learn more about grid areas. My name is Fabian and this was Coding2Go. I'll see you in the next video.